Hi guys! Today we are going to do a watercolor tutorial on blocking in your watercolor image. Blocking in is simply when you just put base colors down for everything to give you an idea of how the whole will look. And I highly recommend it for less experienced watercolorists who might have trouble with color. Um, this video was brought to you, it was sponsored by the comic 7 Inch Kara. 7 Inch Kara is a full watercolor comic. Volume 1 is available now at natosoup.com slash Kara hyphen comic and it's available for $15. It is about 120 pages with the, the back 20 being a wonderful concept section that is designed to inspire your little ones. So if you have a little one in your life and you'd like to encourage reading, 7-inch comic Kara might be the comic for you. And uh, that comic was created and written by myself. So if you enjoy the art on this channel, if you love my art, um, you should really check that out because that is my art. So this image is of Kara and Naomi, and this is the third tutorial for this particular image so far. We've already done penciling, we've done stretching, we also did a wash, so technically this is our fourth uh, tutorial on um, this particular image, and this is my 2016 Christmas slash holiday card image, and my backers are all going to get a Christmas card from me this year. So if you would enjoy a Christmas card, if you enjoy my art, if you enjoy what I do, you could become a backer um, and get one. So we're going to start. You guys can't really see it, but I have a couple of weld palettes. I also have a watercolor palette, actually two to be honest, um, one of which has pan half pans. The other has two watercolors that have been squeezed out and dried. I have two cups of water, one for clean, one for dirty, and I have my brushes. And I'm going to be taking pictures throughout. So in case I lose any of you at any point, um, you can always check this out on the blog at natosoup.blogspot.com. So we're going to start with a large weld palette. This is honestly just a recycled mochi tin um, or mochi container from, you know, like mochi ice cream. Uh, and But it works really well for mixing up large amounts of color. And we're going to start with the fireplace. And this fireplace is going to be a red brick fireplace. And you're going to want to, when blocking in, you want to work with the largest brush you can comfortably work with or the largest brush you have, depending. And you can use synthetics for this. It doesn't need to be, um, they doesn't need to be natural fibers, especially considering how natural fiber brushes do get very expensive. So we're going to go ahead and activate some reds. And unfortunately, I have to do that off of camera just due to size restrictions. But I'm activating some reds and browns. And the paper we're working on today is Canson Moulin de Roy, which if you're familiar with arches, it's very similar in texture and how it handles as arches. It is a cold press mold made watercolor paper. It's 140 pounds. So we went ahead and stretched it just to prevent any additional buckling. And it is a good quality paper for this sort of illustration, illustrations in this size. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to start filling in with a tone of the color we're going to build up to. With watercolor, you can't get lighter. You can only get darker. So it's best to start off much lighter than you would think you would need and work up to that color. And we're working around our fire flames. And if you want it to have a glow effect, which I should have planned for, you can work slightly away and then using a clean brush with clean water especially on nicer papers like this Of course, 
that's not such a concern right now because we are really just working with tones. So it's gonna be very light and we're gonna have plenty of room to build up glow effects. And we're gonna extend some of this tone into the holiday greenery, the garland that is surrounding the hearth. And in order to paint this, I actually have to stand, and this is gonna wreck my back because I'm hunched over. So just think about how much I must love you guys to be doing a tutorial that I know is gonna give me back problems. All right, so we see all this pooling around here. We need to do something about that. So we're gonna dry our wet brush off on a clean paper towel, which makes for a thirsty brush. And we're just gonna absorb that extra paint. And that way we're not gonna get uneven pooling. All right, so we need to allow that to have time to dry. But I'm also going to do the ledge of the hearth. And I am using a very cheap harmony quill that's from Jerry's Artorama. That's actually the little metal bits on it are nipping into my hand. So I really need to get some huge brushes, especially since I do some big standalone illustrations like this one here. So off camera, I went ahead and filled in more of the hearth. Um, and while this Creative Mark Harmony is a very thirsty brush with a large belly, it's actually very difficult to control for this sort of painting. It would probably lend itself really nice to more gestural sort of um, landscapes or backgrounds, but that's not exactly what I'm doing. So as soon as I finish doing this, I'll switch it out. And again, using a thirsty brush, we're just going to absorb the excess paint and water from the page. And I know this is very pink, but we're gonna be working this color up to a dark brick red. But this is gonna give us room to create a glow. And I'm just brushing out some of the paint that is in places where it doesn't really belong. It's one of the nice things about these cotton rag papers is that they're much more forgiving than cellulose or wood pulp based papers. So you can do more corrections like I'm doing. All right, so that needs to dry. And while we're waiting on that to dry, we're gonna go ahead and mix up the color for the garland in the background. So using a pipette off camera, we're just going to go ahead and put water into the large paint wells and activate a couple of greens. And remember, you can't go dark to light with watercolor. You have to go light to dark. So don't mix up your darkest greens, sort of mix up your fresher greens. And since we're just doing toning, it's okay if it bleeds a little bit. So I'll just go ahead and start brushing that in. And as we add layers, as we add glazes, we're going to get progressively darker. So you wanna give yourself room to build up contrast. All right, so we need to give that a chance to dry. So I'll see you guys in a little while. 
As this dried, I realized that I really want a more pronounced glow than I'm going to get from the fire. So I am going to, need more water on that, wet the paper and then dab up some of the paint. And I probably won't be able to get too, too much up, but even a little would still right and I'm also going to go ahead and mix up a slightly well a more yellowy yellow to work on that fire with all right and while the paper is still wet in places I'm going to go ahead and start applying that yellow light because a fire would cast a very yellow a very yellow light around the surroundings of course if you get cat hairs in your watercolor then you know it came from my studio. We'll extend that warm yellow light into the foreground and then we'll blend it out a little bit. And then we'll use a thirsty brush to just sort of absorb any of the excess, but also blend it out a little bit, bring some of that color influence into the foreground. And even though we are going to color over this, apply color over this, um, by applying this sort of glazing at this stage, it'll influence the later colors. And it's something you can't really do later on. You know, it's not going to work quite the same way. So now is a good stage to do some color glazing. And then, although this is technically not toning, while the paper is wet, if you want to do some nice diffuse blending techniques, now's a good time to brush in some of that uh, Indian yellow because it'll diffuse really nicely. Definitely one of the perks with, of working with nicer watercolor papers is you can get these really nice blending effects that you wouldn't get with cheaper papers. It's one of the reasons why I get really frustrated when crafters say don't get the most expensive stuff. I mean, yeah, you really don't want to break the bank while you're still learning, but there's so many wonderful techniques that if you just invest in slightly nicer paper, you will have access to that you're not going to be able to do on the cheaper papers. You just can't get as nice blending techniques on the Canson Montval as you can on the Canson Moulin de Roy. And that's because this paper is cotton rag based. The Montval is cellulose based. And cellulose, for those of you guys who aren't familiar, uh, cellulose is like wood pulp sort of thing. Paper, paper. When people think of paper, like paper, paper. Whereas the cotton rag is more traditional for watercolors. And it's what the fine artists and illustrators tend to use, unless they just have a personal preference for the cellulose. Maybe because they learned on it or because it is cheaper and you can just kind of like make a whole bunch of art but you should at least try the cotton rag watercolor paper before you give up on watercolor all right guys it has had 
pretty decent amount of time to dry. I'm going to switch over to a slightly smaller brush because I'm going to do the base tone for Naomi's skin. And this is much, much lighter than it's actually going to end up being. But like I told you guys, it's better to start off light when you're figuring out tones because you can work darker, but you can't easily get lighter with watercolors. You can apply gouache and stuff, but you know, it's really just easier, in my opinion, to start from the beginning with light colors and plan on getting darker as you go. I'm also blocking in her hair. Her hair is going to end up being much darker than her skin. She has black hair, but I, when I color Naomi, I usually handle it this way. So I don't see any need to change. Now, the paper, especially the fire that I painted, is still very wet. I can, I can feel it damp underneath the paper surface. But it's not migrating. And right now I'm using a squirrel brush, also from Jerry's. It is their, it's just a Creative Mark Squirrel. And although it can hold a lot of liquid, it is very floppy. And it's very difficult to... Um, because it's very soft, it's very difficult to get nice fine details. So it's okay for blocking in things, but it is not good if you need to pull tight details. And as I pick up various brushes, I'll give you guys my impressions of them. Sometimes I use things that I don't really like just because I, I paid money for it and I need, uh, you know, I want to get my money's worth. I can't just go out and buy a replacement and I'm not getting sent replacements. So I have to make the best of it. But if I can help prevent you from making a poor decision, if I can help you um, find products that work for you on the, on the first go round, you know, that's really the goal of the reviews that I do. So please don't assume I'm complaining just to complain. I'm just going through products as I encounter them and letting you know whether or not I like them, whether or not they work. It's easier than buying a bunch of them and writing a sit down review, especially if it's a product I've had in my arsenal for a while, but I still don't really care for it. All right, so as before, make sure you wipe out extra liquid from your brush so that your brush is thirsty. And we're gonna just go through and absorb some of the excess paint from the paper surface. And then we need to give that time to dry. I'm going to switch over to my small palette because I'm going to mix up Kara's skin tone. Since she and Naomi are not adjacent, I can go ahead and knock in her skin tone. And it's just yellow ochre with scarlet. And we're going to use the uh, Creative Mark Rhapsody, which I actually really, really do like. So see, just as I will point out things I don't like, I will praise the things I do. I like the Rhapsody brushes so much. They're affordable Kalinsky Sable brushes sold through Jerry's Artorama. I like them so much that I also use um, the Rhapsody brushes for my inking. Not the same ones that I use for my watercolor. You really don't want to cross your streams um, since some of your inks will get stuck up in the ferrule and make it unsuitable for watercolor. And mixing pigments from moist half pans can tear up the tops of your bristles. You really, if you can afford to have duplicates, you really don't want to mix the two. So she gently blocking in her skin. I know it's a little hard for you guys to see, but at this stage, it's pretty much just like coloring in a coloring book. Nothing fancy going on here. And I want her to have white stockings but the thing about white is white is an optical illusion you need to make things look white we can't just leave it the white of the paper so what we're going to do is i'm going to try to push this up so you guys can see we're going to get a little bitty bit of Payne's gray and as i've said in other tutorial videos um paint dries lighter then it goes down. So this will be much lighter when it dries, as will Naomi's skin. So we are gonna need to mix her skin darker. All right, so 
we need to let this dry. Or I guess we could also um, go ahead and paint in some of these stockings. So for Naomi's stocking, I want a rich red, like a satin. So what we need to do is we're going to start out with a cherry red. And for pancake, maybe a nice blue, not super Christmassy, but you know, that's okay. Maybe for her dad, a nice green. Oh yeah, I'd wanted to do her dad's as a plaid. So I'll do a light coat of green to start with because if we put it down too dark, you're not gonna be able to see any other colors. And for pancake, we said blue. And Pancake, for those of you who haven't read my comic, Kara, yet, um, Pancake is this little black cat who is Naomi's pet, who befriends Kara. So if you like animal stories, Seven Inch Kara might be a good story for you. I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time seeing and controlling my hand. But at least we got that one. Handle. And then a bright red for one of the Lilliputian stockings. And then a purple, like a royal purple for the other one. It's gonna be too dark though, so I need to mix in a lot of water because I want room to develop color. And Naomi's skin is pretty dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and color in her sweater, block in her sweater. That's gonna be way too dark. It's a beautiful color, but that's way too dark for tone. All right, so that needs to dry as well. Okay, so we're going to do Kara's shirt the same way we did her stockings in that we're gonna take a little bit of Payne's Gray and a lot of water because it is a white shirt and we're going to try and leave an outline where it would have hit the light. And also try to leave it light enough. I may have to go over this with a paper towel, pick some of that up. Because white, like I said, you only really realize it's white and not just blank paper when you have the shadows. And there are lots of colors that work really well for white shadows. Um, in this instance, I'm using Payne's Gray, but I've used um, other mixes before in other videos I've talked about my shadow mix is what I use to apply shadows with. And then we're gonna block in Naomi's skirt. Her skirt's gonna end up being black, but we're gonna start with watered down Payne's Gray. Because basically, if you just start applying black, you're not gonna be able to get any darker than that. And for the fur on the stockings, I want that to be white, at least on Naomi's. So a little bit of Payne's Gray. Same thing on her father's stocking. Oh, I'm totally out of shot for that. Sorry, guys. Y'all ought to say something. And then 
for pancakes, I actually want it to be a little bit brown. Like a creamy color, so. Some very, very watered down brown for his. For the present, Kara's holding. I'm gonna go back into that cherry red. And Naomi's box will be white with a red ribbon. So you see, as long as things are not adjacent, it moves pretty quickly. And don't worry, the skirt isn't going to remain the same pink as the bricks currently are. We are going to darken up the bricks. And I'm also painting through the lace a little bit to make it look translucent. And that really just means, let's see if I can zoom in. I don't know that I'll be able to given the layout of this table. It's about as good as I'm gonna get. It just means painting over that blue at these really early preliminary stages. And we'll paint her hair ribbon as well. Now for Naomi's eyes, we'll just lock them in with a little bit of olive uh, green gold. And try to leave some of the yellow from the fire. And for the fire irons, we're gonna go, those would be black, so we're gonna go in with that Payne's Gray. Brush got away from me a little bit. It's okay. All right. So almost everything is fully blocked in. Got a couple steps left to do. Um, and then we can end this tutorial and move on to the next. So I'll go ahead and zoom out so you guys can see the whole thing. And I'll see you guys in a few minutes after this dries. All right, guys. So I'm just going to go ahead and block in the wood that's burning at the bottom. And it's going to be almost black in the finished illustration, but I don't want to do that now because I'm going to be doing some blends and some washes as well as numerous glazes. So uh, I really don't want to give the colors too much of an opportunity to run all over the place and to get too blendy because it's going to turn possibly to mud. Now these nicer papers, again, like this Canson Moulin de Roy, which is what I'm working on right now, um, they are less prone to muddiness, less prone to the colors um, sort of flaking off or getting chalky than the wood pulp base papers. But you know, you don't want to set yourself up for problems too early on. And right now we're really just blocking in, laying down base colors to serve as a roadmap. So you want to paint light enough that if you need to change the color for some things, it's not going to be a huge problem. So we don't want to go too, too dark, even with things that are meant to be dark. And we're even going to very lightly start on the ash at the bottom of the fireplace using a very watered down Nero black. Now ash is often sort of a salt and pepper color. So using a very watered down Nero black to put down a, or carbon black, this might be carbon black, um, to put down just a little bit of color will make it easier to paint in the future Actually, the whole bottom would be pretty dirty. 
And you guys have noticed that I've been applying, when I'm working with, with unmixed colors, I've just been applying them kind of lazily to my blue painter's tape. So long as you don't dip your hand in them while they're still wet, they aren't going to be an issue. Um, I don't necessarily recommend this if you're an absolute beginner. Um, this is a method that I use when painting Kara pages and it works for me, but it might not work for you. Your mileage, like anything, will vary. And there have been pages where I accidentally smeared this wet paint onto my active page area. And howled a scream of anguish. All right, so now we have our basic palette filled in. Um, we, I need to allow this to fully dry. And so I will call this tutorial finished. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something about blocking in your watercolor illustrations. This is particularly useful with um, palettes that you might not be familiar with or where you might need to make significant changes. Um, this is a helpful technique as well if you are starting watercolor comics because it can really help you get the feel of a page. Um, we always want to start light, work towards dark. When doing these sort of things, you, if you want to work quickly, you can fill in non-adjacent areas of color all in the same go. You don't have to wait for individual islands of color to dry. Um, you can... Uh, you can always change your colors as long as they're not too dark. I mean, you're not going to be able to put a yellow over this purple, for example, but over this pink, if we wanted to change that to a navy, we could get away with that. Um, so I will see you guys, hopefully, in our next Watercolor Basics tutorial where we start actually rendering this page rather than just laying down ideas of color. Um, the rendering is really where all of the, the, the character form comes from for, for my art. Um, I hope you guys will tune in again, and I am really glad that you guys hung out with me today. Once again, if you enjoy my art, please take a moment to check out my sponsor, 7-Inch Kara Volume 1, an all-ages watercolor adventure, the first volume of which is available now at natosoup.com slash Kara hyphen comic, N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P dot com slash K-A-R-A hyphen comic, and you can find that by clicking card right here. Um, supporting my comic helps support this sort of these sort of tutorials, this sort of work, and the comic is really the reason why I'm doing any of this. It's because I love comics and I'm working hard on that one and I want to promote my art. So if you enjoy the art on this channel, purchasing the comic is an excellent way to support more of it, and you'll get more of Naomi and Kara as well. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to hit like. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave me a comment below. If you ever have a criticism or a problem with something that I did, please address me directly. You can do so through the comments or you can do so through email. We're all adult. Well, we can all behave maturely here, so please do um, treat me with the sort of respect that you would like to have accorded to yourself. Um, if you really, really like this video, please take a moment to share it to your friends and family on your favorite social network. You are doing me a huge favor and helping me out a lot, and it makes you look like you are an inside source for great art education content, so it really makes you look good, too. Um, if you really, really, really like this, please head on over to the blog, natosoup.blogspot.com, for more of my watercolor basics tutorials. Um, that is an ongoing series. There are several posts in it already. And um, photos from this tutorial will be up there as well in case you missed a step or you need a different sort of explanation. We all learn differently, and some of us learn better from writing than we do from listening. I'm definitely one of those people who retain more from reading it myself, so I can appreciate and understand that. So if you would like another take on this topic, please head on over there. And if you would like to help support more art educational content, please head on over to my Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup for information on how to join my community of art nerds. Joining my Patreon grants you exclusive access to early access videos. My backers do get a lot of my videos before anyone else gets to see it, often by like two weeks time. Um, 
uh, backer exclusive videos like my re my review of Create Spaces print service and their layout service, and they also get voting rights on the sort of content that I'm going to make. So if that sounds good to you, if you would like to get involved, please check that out. I'm Becca Hilburn. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today in my studio, Netto Soup Studio. I'll see you guys again really soon with our rendering tutorial for watercolor. Bye, guys.